Hey guys, welcome back to Burns' Math Club. Today we'll be learning about equations and how we can solve them using inverse operation. So we know that an equation is just a mathematical way of saying that two expressions are equal to one another, and we do that by putting an equal mark in between them. And so inverse operations are just, we know that we have four operations in math, which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So inverse operations is when if we have addition in our equation, we are going to do subtraction in order to solve it. And the same thing if we have subtraction, we'll do addition. So addition and subtraction go together, and the same thing goes for multiplication and division. If we have multiplication, we'll divide. If we have division, we'll multiply. And so let's go ahead and do an example. So let's say that we have, okay, let me change the color of this. Okay, so let's say we have x plus 4 is equal to 10. So we know that in an equation, we are solving for the variable. We want to find the value of that variable. And so therefore, we have to isolate it, right? So we want to get rid of anything else that's, being hap that's happening to that variable. So in this case, that we, we see that x is being added to 4. So we know that the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So we want to get rid of plus 4. We are going to have to do minus 4. Now keep this in mind. Whatever you do to one side, do it to the other side as well. You have to, okay? You have to keep a balance between the equations. So if you do minus 4 on this side, you'll do minus 4 on the other side as well. And if you're confused between like what a side is, then this equal mark is kind of like the border between one side and the other. So x plus 4 is one side, and then 10 is the other in this case. So if we do minus 4 on both sides, we know that if it's the opposite signs in the same number, it cancels each other out. So we are left with x is equal to 10 minus 4, which is 6. And we can check this by substituting the x with 6. So we know that 6 plus 4 is 10. So therefore, our answer is correct. Okay, so let's do another example. This time, let's say we have x minus 3 is equal to to 15. So this time we have subtraction in our problem. So we know that the inverse of subtraction is addition and so we're gonna have to add 3 to both sides to get our variable alone, okay? So if we add 3 on both sides, we know that opposite signs, same um, number is gonna cancel each other out. So we are left with x is equal to 15 plus 3 which is 18. And so if we want to check our answer, 18 is substituted for x, and we know that 18 minus 3 is 15, therefore our answer is correct. Okay, another problem. So this time, let's say we have 5x, okay, 5x is equal to 25. This time, x is being multiplied to 5. We know that the inverse of multiplication is division. So in order to get rid of the 5, we're going to have to divide it by 5, both sides. So we know that 5 and 5 cancel each other out. So we are left with x is equal to 25 divided by 5, which is 5. All right, the last problem is going to deal with division. Okay, so let's say that we have x divided by 6 is equal to 24. Okay. So since x is being divided by 6, we're going to have to multiply it. Now remember this. If it makes it easier, we can think of x over 6 as 1 over 6. So we need to find the reciprocal of 1 over 6. We know that the reciprocal means that we have to change the fraction upside down. So the same 1 over 6 is the same thing as 6 over 1. So we're going to have to multiply x over 6 by 6 over 1, which is the same thing as 6. So keep this in mind, when you have division, you have to multiply it by its reciprocal. So if you multiply both sides by 6, we know that 6 and 6 cancel each other out. We are left with x is equal to 24 times 6, which is equal to 144. So if you want to go ahead and do the division to the side, I mean multiplication to the side, we know that 24 times 6, 6 times 4 is 24, and 4 carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14, and therefore our answer is correct. And so that's it for this video. So equations with inverse operations, all it is, 
is as long as you know what the inverse operations are, so you know that addition goes with subtraction and multiplication goes with division, it's really simple. And so these inverse operations really come in handy when you're solving more complex equations. So these were just examples of one-step equations. Now there will be equations with multi-steps, and so inverse operations are pretty important. And so that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!